Hello, my name is Paul Phillips and I want to talk about the importance of stillness. However you define being with God, being with Jesus, stillness is crucially important to being with him. And what I mean by stillness doesn't necessarily mean a kind of physical uh, location, doesn't necessarily mean silence or solitude or going away, though obviously that will help. What I mean by stillness is this inner stillness. All around us there is noise. But also inside us, in our heads, we sometimes have noise. You have all these things that are going around in your head. Endless trivia, self-centered chatter, worries, dreams, visions. And they're all going around in our head. And we need to learn to create a place of stillness. It's a mindset. It's a way of doing life. It's being aware of the presence and the reality of God in this moment right now. Or another way of looking at it using the illustration of noise is the largest noise that dominates our thinking, that captures our attention, is God. And we need to come to that place where we live in the reality and an awareness of God every moment of our life to be still. There's a verse in Psalm 46 verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Now this word to know God, we also find it in Genesis 4 verse 1. This is in the ESV version. It says, now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain. This word know is the Hebrew word yada. And it can mean many things. It can mean like know about and facts and information. But it has a deeper meaning. The aim and the root of Yada is intimacy. God desires for us to have a comprehensive, personal, face-to-face, -face, intimate encounter with him. God wants us to have a Yada with him every day. To know him in such an intimate way that it produces fruitfulness it brings forth life just like Adam knew Eve yada and it brought forth life this is what it means to be still and that's why it's so crucial that we learn to be still to be with God another example why it's important to be still is it's in that place of stillness that we hear the voice of God and all around us we have that outer noise that's just speaking Speaking our words, speaking our identity, speaking its opinion of us. And the voice that we need to hear above any other voice is the voice of God speaking our worth and our identity. And speaking into our calling and what he wants us to do. And again we see this in scripture. There's a story about Elijah. Now if you know the story of Elijah in 1 Kings 18, um, we have the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel, God turns up, fire falls down. Then a bit later on, a famine that's been going on for like three, three and a half years is stopped as Elijah cries out to God. Just amazing things. But then we find that he is running from Jezebel. He has fear. He's disillusioned. He's frustrated. He's angry. He's tired. He's weary. He's burnt out. His faith is at an all-time low. He has a distorted view of himself of life and that's what often happens and then God comes to him and you have this story in 1 Kings chapter 19 where he's on the mountain of God and there's fire there's earthquake there's wind always that God has spoken to his people in the past but he speaks through none of those then it says God spoke to him in a whisper the actual Hebrew there is that God spoke to him through sheer silence. Wow. Through sheer silence. He hears the voice of God. And as you read 1 Kings 19, Elijah goes away a transformed person. With a new sense of who he is and a new sense of his calling. With a new sense of hope and expectation and faith. Stillness is crucial to be with God. 
And there is this battle of kind of noise, inner noise and outer noise that's happening all the time. But there's ways of being still, of learning just to be with God. And so in the time that you, you'll be having in a few minutes, we're going to share and talk about different ways to be still. Because it is like a foundation. You see, stillness helps you in some of the other areas that people often connect with God. Be it maybe when you're answering the question of how you connect, how you'll be with God, you might have said prayer. Well, it's really hard to pray when you have all these thoughts bouncing around in your head. Even good thoughts like your prayer list, learning to be still. You might have written down that the way that you connect with God best and being with Him is by having a, a Bible study. But again, within all of that, you need to have that stillness so you can hear the voice of the one who inspired the authors to write the Bible, the Holy Spirit, to speak fresh life and fresh truth through sometimes what might be very familiar passages to us. But that comes as we learn to still ourselves. You might have put down that the way that you best connect with God, it's very popular, is worship, just singing songs of praise and adoration to Him. But again, you can get caught up in the noise, in the melodies, in the tunes, and not still one's heart and encounter God in that moment. And so stillness is really crucial, which is why we want to give some time and some tools and some disciplines that will help us learn to be still. Yes, solitude, going away. I love doing that. But we also have to live our lives every day. And so we want to have tools and ways of learning to be still and aware of God in our everyday.